Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie and today we'll be talking about storage and organization tips for a small closet, plus my favorite Amazon finds. Raise your hand if you don't have enough closet space. Same here everyone, same here. If you are working with a teeny tiny reach-in closet or a really small walk-in but you feel like you're not using the space quite efficiently, this video is for you. Even though I converted a guest bedroom into my dream walk-in closet in this current home, I remember what it was like when my husband and I, then boyfriend, shared a really tiny walk-in closet in my studio. I know what you're thinking, the smaller the closet, the more difficult it is to lay out an organizational system that works for you. But I promise if you follow my designer tips, I will get you feeling like Carrie Bradshaw or at least her closet in no time at all. We've got storage tips, organizational hacks, the methods I use for every single client no matter how big or small their closet is. Stay tuned till the end so that you can shop all the looks featured in this video plus my favorite Amazon shopping finds. Start with a great purge, then use these small closet ideas to create twice as much space as you had before. Let's talk about the first most crucial step in organizing. Before you get to reorganizing any portion of your closet, it's really important that you do a thorough clean out. This is when you decide what to do with all of your items. What to keep, what to sell, what to donate, what to give to a friend, a charity, a homeless shelter, a local thrift shop, you get the idea. Then move on to a strategic manner in which you organize your clothes by type. Tops with tops, pants with jeans, dresses, sweaters, swimwear, long coats, seasonal items, and all the little accessories in between. You must start with taking inventory of everything that you're keeping so you understand what you're trying to store and organize around. Step two is to take inventory of the remaining items and measure. What exactly are you measuring? If you hang the items that you currently are working with back onto the rods without an organizational system, that is pretty much what you're measuring. Take out a tape measure and measure how much space you need for tops, for pants, for dresses, for coats, and so on. You'll also be measuring the length of your closet and the height of your closet so you know what you're working with. Let's talk about the hanging rods, the shelving, and all of the key measurements that you have to look out for. In a typical eight foot high reach-in closet or a really small walk-in, you're dealing with about 96 inches of vertical space. Now how you break that up is entirely up to you. You might have a four foot wide closet, you might be working with a six foot wide, you might even have a small L shape. To maximize vertical space for tops and pants, you might want a double hanging rod. Ideally, the uppermost rod should be hung at 84 inches high and the lower rod at 42 inches. So you're splitting a difference between a seven feet and you have 12 inches left over for upper shelving. If you're installing a single rod for long coats or long dresses, ideally you want that rod hung between 65 inches and 68 inches above the finished floor. The leftover space above this rod could be used for a really long linear shelf, is a perfect space for purses, hats, additional accessories, even seasonal shoes. And the leftover space below can always be used to push in a laundry hamper or shoes that you use on the daily. Now that you know what you're hanging, let's talk about those storage ideas for your knits and folded items. You might remember from my previous closet organization video where I showed you my own walk-in closet, knits should never be hung. Ideally, you should be folding all of your knits, your woven items, your sweaters, your cardigans. If you hang them on a hanger, no matter whether it's a wooden hanger, a bamboo hanger, a slim velvet hanger, over time, the weight of the fabric will sag on the hanger and cause those little dips where the shoulders are. 
So always use shelves and cubbies or even drawers when you can to store all of your knit items. You might even want to use internal acrylic dividers to help divide the space up so it's more tidy and organized. Here are a few of my favorite designer tips to get you organizing your closet like a pro. My first tip is to remove all of the closet doors in a reach-in closet. I don't know anything that's bulkier than a bifold door or an accordion door or even a swing door, especially on a small reach-in closet. To me, it's just not functional. Once you open the door, you might bump into a dresser or a nightstand that you have beside your bed. Sliding doors are just clunky. I mean, really, they only offer you full functionality of one side of the closet at a time. My best solution is to remove the doors completely and use curtains instead. If you keep the door, make sure it's functional by using the back for additional storage or even a makeshift library or bookshelf for the kids. Once you're done organizing the closet of your dreams, think about adding some personality to the space. I love the impact of water wall wallpaper, especially lining the back of a small walk-in closet. Use temporary wallpaper if you're in a rental or you have trouble committing. You could also add some fun bright accents to the back of the closet with a really bold paint color. For anyone whose tiny closet is already packed to the brim or who doesn't even have a closet to begin with, a freestanding clothing rack is a lifesaver. Since your wardrobe is exposed, it'll force you to keep your clothes nice and organized instead of a pile in the middle of the closet. If you don't have enough space for your growing collection of shoes, think about rehousing your shoes in a linen closet or a hallway coat closet if your bedroom is getting too full. They're the last thing you put on, so it's okay if you need to go to another area to find them. If you use your garage entry instead of the main entry door, this is the opportune time for you to install wire shelves to house your shoe collection. If your front entry door is the only one you use, I love these IKEA cabinets that are a great solution for small foyers and tight hallways. Always think about reorganizing seasonally. Store all unused seasonal items either under your bed or in hard to reach corners of your closet. I use the upper storage space above my closet, which of course was previously a guest room, it might not be convenient for everyday items, but it's the perfect spot for extra suitcases, which I fill with seasonal outerwear. Here are my favorite organizational closet hacks with products I found right off of Amazon. If you're starting from scratch, my number one tip is to remove all of the contents of your closet. This includes the shelves, the rods, the racks, pretty much everything so you're working with a clean blank slate. I love this closet kit in white. You have the option of using either a wire shelving kit or a freestanding closet organizer. Most of these systems are modular, so they really could span from four feet all the way up to 10 and 12 feet wide. You can personalize this kit with your own premium heavy duty adjustable closet rods in black, brass, nickel, whatever suits your personal aesthetic, there's a metal for that. I love these stackable bins for your accessories and your shoes. The acrylic dividers make it so easy to see all of your items and even group them by color. Always use identical hangers for a streamlined and consistent look. I love slim velvet hangers if you're short on space, but wooden and bamboo hangers are just so chic, especially when visible in an exposed closet. You can also add storage under your clothes by placing a small dresser or this storage rack that you can easily pull in and out. The top of the rack can hold accessories like your jewelry or even toiletries on a tray. If you already have a rod in place, I love these cloth hanging closet organizers. They're sturdy enough for you to hang your heavy knits, t-shirts, even slide your shoes in and out of. If you're looking for a smart solution to hang right over the door, Think about using pantry organizers with little baskets that attach to the rack.
I'd like to end this video with a small closet case study. Yesterday, I asked Kelly to go home and shoot her closet for me. I mean, I really came up with the idea for this video because Kelly said she had a teeny tiny walk-in closet and she didn't feel as though she was using the space efficiently. So of course, the first thing I asked her to do was go home, take pictures, and measure the space for me. So here we have it. I haven't looked at the measurements. This is the first time I'm seeing it. I'm really going to be isolating what her key issues are, the types of things that she needs to store. I'm gonna look at what she has, take inventory of what she's keeping, and develop a system for her right off of this basic sketch. We're working with a small walk-in closet that's about six feet by six feet which is pretty sizable, except that one of the major issues here is that she has two doors leading into the space. Anytime you have any sort of passage or doors in your closet, obviously that is not usable vertical space that you could use for wall storage. So already there's two walls that are kind of already out. What we have left to work with is essentially two main walls but how you divide this wall up is up to you. So I'll be marking up this floor plan with my key ideas to show Kelly how to better use her space. We've got 15 inches of depth on one side, which is usually not enough to hang and store clothes. You typically need about 24 inches of depth in order to hang a rod, which is about 12 inches away from the wall, and then you could put a shelf right on top of it. So the only side that we actually have 24 inches of depth is this 29 inch side. So I'll be putting a rod on this side. 12 inches from this space would be your hanging rod. This more shallow 15 inch side, even though you could put a 12 inch rod over there, her clothes will really be hanging into the walkway, which that might not be a really huge issue because obviously you still have more space on the other side, but this is probably the side that I would designate for longer dresses, longer coats, and then maybe even put a cubby or a dresser underneath. Remember that every time you have an opening or a doorway, you need at least 36 inches or three feet so that it's ample space for you to walk through. Never neglect the vertical wall space that you have left. This is the perfect spot for your accessories like your earrings, your necklaces, your hats, pretty much anything that you need to grab and go that doesn't take up a whole lot of depth, that doesn't take up a whole lot of width, and you can find organizational products just like I share on Amazon to install right on the walls. What did you think of my solutions to Kelly's closet? Kelly, I hope you have a better idea of how you can efficiently use the space now, and I hope you viewers out there got some really good tips for your small closet design. The first few videos that I made on the channel were all about closet design. So even if you don't have a huge walk-in closet or a guest room that you converted into a closet, you should definitely check out those two videos for key styling, organizational, and storage hacks. I also have a video on stylish storage solutions. That video is all about hiding your junk in plain sight, which I love, because let's be honest here, who has all of that storage space that you can just throw everything in the closet, close the doors and forget about it? If you liked all of my storage and organizational ideas for a small closet, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know if you have any questions on how to store a specific item in your small closet. I would love to help you in the comments below. Definitely subscribe to my channel and click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we roll out every Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.